today basically what we're going to do is uh, show how easy it is to walk out a, a leak at uh, 612 megahertz with our, our new Seeker D uh, with the optional uh, Yagi antenna. Uh, what I've got in my hand is a, is a work order and, it, and it's telling me this where the dot is, that's where the, uh, the peak reading was that our law software uh, determined where the leak was. So I have that in mind as I'm driving towards the, the location and basically what I'm going to do is, is try to peek out the meter. And roughly right here is where the dot is. So I'm going to put the vehicle in park and I'll take the Seeker D out of the cradle and uh, let's see how easy it is to find this leak. So as I was saying in the vehicle, the, uh, the work order places the dot right about here. And so what I'm going to do when I get out of the car is I'm going to look to see where my plant is. Uh, as you can see down here, the, the plant comes across. I know there's a, there's a the tap right over here and then if you follow it back between these trees, there's an amplifier and a, and a couple taps and stuff over there. Uh, so probably my biggest potential of, uh, of a leak level would probably come from over where, it, where, the, uh, where that amplifier is. So, so with the Seeker D, with the, with the Yagi, I'm going to aim it over towards, the, towards that amplifier, trying it horizontally and vertically. And you can see we're a pretty good distance away, but we can we can already detect a, a 40 something microvolt leak. And basically, I'm going to check the plan over in this direction as well, because I I also suspect suspect that uh, uh, that tap over here, and I do see a level over here. So we'll just walk over. And actually, I'm picking up 50, 60. Actually, I just walked walked in front of my vehicle so it's probably reflecting off of that and I'm picking up that extra energy. Now that I get past it, it, it drops down to, to a lower level. So as I get over here underneath this tap, I'm seeing a pretty decent level. Um, well, we just went, we just found a null. I'm seeing 50, 60 microvolts. It's coming and going because of the uh, uh, the wind and it's and it's potentially a null here and possibly it's it's traveling down the line so if I get here down here a little bit closer and then aim the Yagi down the line closer to those amps towards those amps as you can see the level rises so we'll follow uh, we'll follow down a little bit farther <clears throat> and as you can see the level is rising it goes up to a hundred microvolts and basically I'm halfway between poles. I'm going to take the time to to sweep across and see what my levels do. And as you can see it just dropped off to nothing. And I'm pointing right at that that uh, drop over there and, and there's nothing coming from this direction. So if I swing it back and at this point I'm, I'm sweeping the whole cable looking to see if perhaps there's squirrel chews or, or other damage to the cable but clearly as I'm aiming down the line towards the amp uh, the, the leak is is clearly down that way so we'll we'll continue on and as we go I'm look listening for the audible tone as it goes gets to a higher pitch uh, higher level of, of pitch it it uh, indicates a higher Higher, uh, higher value of a leak. So now that I'm at the amplifier, we're looking at a 200 plus microvolt leak. Horizontally polarized as I turn it to, to match the polarization, it goes up to 200, uh, 260 microvolts plus. And now if I pan it away from it to the left, the leak level goes down. Again, back to it. It peaks up, and then I 
past, uh, go beyond it, and it drops off again. So clearly, there's there's something right there at that amplifier. And let's move back over here. And as you can see, we just moved a couple of feet, and it's radiating in this direction more than than it was just a couple feet to the left of where I am. So at this point, I would I would uh, go back to the truck, grab my ladder, and and uh, see what's causing that leak.